everybody. Well, good evening to everyone. Good to see you. Hello, Joe. Amen. Good, good to see you with us tonight. Yeah. We're going to sing in a minute, so you get ready for that, okay? We're going to sing just in a minute now. All right, isn't it good to be back in the house of God? I trust you've had a good day today. Another beautiful uh, November day. And God has blessed us, and now he's given us a, a time together once again at the table. And let him bless us and feed us and help us. And that's exactly what we need tonight, isn't it? God's help every day. So, with that in mind, let's stand together, and we're going to sing this good old song, Redeem, How I Love to Proclaim It, Redeem by the Blood of the Lamb. Let's stand and sing tonight. child and forever I am. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. You see, that's God's grace and mercy to us. So praise the Lord for that. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray tonight for, of course, we've been praying for Barbara Anderson and Barbara still uh, in the ICU um, in Princeton Hospital fighting this COVID disease. And we found out today that Gil, now her husband, has it as well and is in the hospital. And he too, I think, is having a difficult time this evening. So let's pray for Gil and Barbara Anderson. Many of you all remember Barbara. She was a sister to Ann Saunders. Ann was a member here for years before she passed away. And, and so let's remember Gil and Barbara Anderson tonight. And then I know there was uh, Stacy Harden. Let's remember her. And let's remember uh, Russ and Lori, Devin. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks. Uh, this you know, disease is affecting, and so we need to pray for them. And uh, many, many we don't even know about. Amen. And so let's pray for them. Let's continue to pray for Colin. Colin's doing well, recovering from his heart surgery, his home. So we thank God for that uh, tonight as well. And let's see, Pam, let's continue to pray for Pam Carter. And uh, pray for Joseph Carter. Joseph will be facing some surgery on his eye. He had a piece of metal went through his eye. And so he's going to be facing some surgeries. Uh, coming up, so let's remember him. Anybody else tonight? Remember Sherry. Sherry, yes, yes. Let's pray for Sherry Sisk. Sherry's battling this COVID disease as well, and she's in the hospital. She's still in the hospital? I think she may get to go home later. 
Well, praise the Lord for that. Uh, so she is improving. June Wood, Dr. Wood, David Wood's wife, has, was improving. I saw where he got to talk to her, and so that was good. So we, uh, she still needs a lot more improvement, but she's improving from where she was. So we thank God for that. Anybody else? Tammy Glover. Tammy Glover. Okay, remember this need tonight. Jerry Ray. <laughs> Jerry Ray, okay. Well, we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? For well, God's being good to us. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Bethany, Bethany and Jesse's coming home, ain't they? Yeah. So pray for Jenny and Penny as they travel down to pick them up. And they drive, go down and back. And, and uh, Grace, Grace, I guess, coming home too, Grace Morato. So let's pray for her. And many of the college kids are coming home uh, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, holiday season. So let's pray for them as they travel on the road. Okay, let's look to the Lord in prayer tonight. Our Father, which art in heaven, oh God, we thank you, Lord, for giving us another day, another beautiful day, Lord, upon your earth, blessing us, Father. You gave us an opportunity to be in the house of God this morning, and Lord, you blessed us one more time to be able to come back in the house of God tonight. We pray, Father, you'll bless the meeting, Lord, bless the service as only you can, bless the preaching of God's word, Lord, it'll take place in here, and it'll take place with the teenagers tonight. We thank you, Lord, for having the teenagers in here with us tonight, and we just ask you, Lord, to continue to bless the church, bless these ministries, Lord, that we have. Father, they've been under attack lately, but God, you're still God, and you're still in control, and, and Father, we just ask you, Lord, to help us. And Father, we thank you for these that are here tonight. We pray you'll bless them for being in the house of God tonight. For those that are listening by the way of our live stream, Lord, you'll help them, Father, and bless them, Father. Feed them tonight as well. And Lord, we pray for many needs that we've talked about. Lord, we continue to pray for Dot in the hospital, Lord, recovering from hip surgery. Lord, we pray for her tonight, and Lord, we pray for uh, Sandy and her family, Lord, and the loss of their loved one. We pray for Cheryl tonight, Lord, that you'll be with her. Lord, give her wisdom and guidance and help. And Lord, we pray for these that's been mentioned here, Lord, tonight. We pray for uh, Gil and Barbara, Lord, in the hospital tonight. That you'll be with them, Lord, and lift them from this bed of sickness. And we pray for Sherry, sis, tonight, Lord. We're thankful to hear she might get to go home. Father, continue to help her for Stacy Harden, for Russ and Lori. Uh, for uh, Devin, Lord, we just pray, Father, for them. Lord, that you'll strengthen them and lift them up, Father, tonight uh, from this sickness that they're in. And, Lord, these other requests that have been mentioned here tonight, we pray for uh, Mary's niece that she mentioned. Lord, that you'll be with her and help her tonight. For Colin, God, we pray for him. Lord, and we thank you for his surgery being well. And, Lord, things going well for him. Lord, continue, Father, to uh, strengthen him and heal him, Father, from his surgery. Lord, for Gail as she continues to recover from surgery. And, Lord, I know there's other people facing surgery. Joseph will be facing pretty soon. Shelby's going to have to have surgery. And we just ask you, Lord, to be guide, guide and help them. Pray for Pam tonight, Lord, that you'll strengthen her and lift her up. While we ask your blessing upon our meeting here tonight as we get into the Word of God, Lord, may we just learn something that will help us, Father, with our walk with thee. And, Father, we just pray for our world that's in trouble. Pray for our nation, the leadership of our nation. God, you'll intervene, Father, and forgive our nation of their sin. And God, help us to continue to preach the word and be faithful, Lord, in season, out of season. Father, that souls will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, forgive us of our sin. Lead us, Lord, the way that's pleasing unto thee. Help us, God, tonight to honor you in some way. Whatever's accomplished here, Father, we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' precious name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. All right, Brother Gary's going to come. And he's going to sing for us tonight. So, Brother Gary, you come. Sing. went to prepare by his own hand and 
for the saved by grace. There is a resting place, and in a few more days, it will be mine. Some not ever be as good as they'd been. Well, I've got good news for you. When heaven comes into view, one glimpse and you'll know the best is yet to come. Please stand. We're going to sing Near the Cross, please. Please stand.
raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross i'll watch and wait hoping trusting ever till i reach the golden strand just beyond the Now, let's see. Uh, You teenagers now, you can be excused uh, to go uh, to the the remainder of your uh, uh, class tonight. Pastor May's going to give you something. So you can be dismissed at this time. Thank you for being in here with us tonight. All right, I'll remind you now in our giving uh, for our um, dollar for missions that we do every Sunday. Of course, uh, we're honoring our mission. We call it, I guess, mission of the month, and that's the uh, Joseph Boys Academy uh, that's located right here in our own West Virginia in Jumping Branch. And we've been supporting the Joseph's, it's, uh, it's called, uh, it's what it's called, uh, Joseph's Academy for Boys. And uh, they take these young men and, and uh, troubled and have a lot of problems and rebellious and all those kind of things, and they, they take them up there. It's, uh, they got a big farm up there, and they put them to work. And they preach to them and teach them, and and uh, and, and and they're they're doing a lot of good work up there. Of course, they're like everybody else. All this COVID hit, and of course, it it just you know slows everything down for them. And I read in the letter here where they c- couldn't decide whether to send the boys back home, which would have been a disaster to them boys, or just to lock them in where they're at. So they decide to keep them where they're at. They'll do more good for them there than to send them back to what they was in. And so that's what they've done. And, of course, they're like every other mission. And uh, a lot of churches today, uh, when, when this COVID thing come, they decided and, uh, to start cutting. And one of the things they cut was the mission work. And uh, so they've had some, some things cut out. And, uh, and the Lord's still providing. Amen. And uh, so what do you give today? We'll see that the Joseph Academy for Boys receives this week to help them. Meet whatever need they need to meet. You know, that's the way God works in it. And he uses other people to help us along the way. And you can hear story after story. And I've received many phone calls and uh, emails and letters from missionaries that we have done this for. Uh, to say, you preach, said, preach, you have no idea that that arrived right at the very time we something is needed. And so that's the way it works. God knows what to do, and he does it. And here's the good part. He uses us to do it. Amen. So give tonight to the Joseph Boys Academy here, right here in Jumping Branch and help them. They're our mission of the month. Okay, uh, let's see. Gary, you got another song? Yes, sir. All right, Gary's going to come sing another song. How he can turn these cries of sorrow into praise. And I don't see how he can turn these nights of Oh! 
just as an anchor holds a drifting vessel, a gentle force restrains my soul yet still, and to my soul I hear a small voice whisper just have faith and yes I know Gary for those songs tonight I don't know how but I know he will amen and that's the way God works and uh, always works right on time doesn't he not our time but his time and uh, okay there we go all righty well open your Bibles with me tonight for a few minutes in the book of Philippians book of Philippians chapter number two and um, I just want to talk just a little bit tonight you'll find a phrase in the scripture, we're going to read verses, uh, we're going to look at verses 1 through 11 of Philippians chapter 2 tonight, and, and just with this thought, let this mind be in you. And uh, as I read this, I thought about the mind of Christ, and uh, uh, we're instructed to have the mind of Christ, aren't we? We're instructed to let our thoughts be according to what Christ would do. You've heard the phrase, and, and there was bracelets all put out, and all those things, and what would Jesus do? You see, that's, that's probably something good to live by and to think by and to approach things by. Uh, how would Jesus handle these things? You know, we're living in a time when there's just all kind of stuff going on and a lot of things we've got to worry about and wonder about and, and uh, tiptoe around and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, it becomes difficult to do sometimes. But God's always faithful and God's always good and God never fails and we must keep that in our mind tonight. So... Um, we're going to we're going to look at the first eleven verses of Philippians chapter number two. And by the way, Philippians was you might say Paul's joy book. You see, he was he, this was a letter. You know, Paul wrote different types of letters. When you read Corinthians, he was writing a letter of correction, a letter to set right wrongs, letters to a carnal church, and uh, and and I'm, I'm sure that was a very difficult letter for him to write. When you come to the book of Philippians, it is a, a letter of joy. And you, you find the word joy in there many times. And, 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 and even in today's, tonight's text, he'll talk about fulfilling my joy. Uh, uh, you know, the, and, and the people were, you know, we don't, by the way, there's not a perfect people. Uh, some people think they're perfect. But that's, that's their problem. They're thinking too much. Amen. You see, there's no perfect people. And, uh, you know, because uh, when you begin to brag about how perfect you are, then you're lying. So that just washes the whole thing away. Amen. I met a woman one time. I ain't going to mention no names. Somebody might know who she was. But uh, I, don't, I, I think she's gone now, I believe, but I don't know. But, but it's some years ago, and we were talking about 
God's grace and how good God is and, and that I was thankful that God forgives sinners and, and that he forgives us when we sin. And she said, well, I'll have you know, young man, I haven't sinned in word or deed since I've been saved. And I thought, well, you just did because you lied. Amen. There's not one perfect. There was only one perfect that walked upon this earth and that was Jesus Christ. The rest of us are sinners saved by grace. That's what we are, amen. And so when you begin to think you're perfect, I believe Paul told us when we think too much of ourselves, we better watch out because we're going to fall, amen. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, we've got to watch what we do and watch what we say and be faithful in what we do, but at our best, we are, we are sinners. Paul begins to write a letter of joy here, and he begins to talk about the mind of Christ. And you ever thought about having the mind of Christ? If we all would seek just to have the mind of Christ, think how much better our world would be. I think uh, 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 everywhere we went and everything we did, if we did it with the mind of Christ, you see. By the way, Christ, when he was upon this earth, looked at everything through the lens of God. His goal was to please God the Father. It was to please His Father in all that He did. So He looked at everything through the lens of God. Would God the Father be pleased with what I said? Would God the Father be pleased with what I'm doing? If it didn't please the Father, then He stayed away from it. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't have anything to do with it. You and I need to look through the same lens tonight. Does it please the Father? Is he happy with what I'm doing? And is he pleased with what I'm saying? You see, he, Jesus had God on his mind. And, and, but people, you know, some people say, well, he was God. That's right. He was God that became flesh. And when he became flesh, he became subject to the same things that you and I are subject to. He becomes subject to feelings. He becomes subject to emotions. He becomes subject to anger. He became subject subject to all those things you see when he became flesh he left royalty and became like you and I but yet in, 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 in the same state you and I were in he was still the sinless lamb of God but he was God all the time you see so he looked at things through the eyes of God he knew that God was capable of doing all things yes Jesus had to give up some things. He gave up some things to come to this earth and dwell among us. He chose to suffer and hurt for mine and your salvation tonight. Therefore, because he was God, but yet became man, therefore he knows what it is to suffer. He knows what it is to hurt. He knows what it is to be rejected. He knows what it is to have a crowd that doesn't like you. Amen. He knows that. And so tonight you and I can be comforted by our, by, our, by our friend, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and that He knows where we are and He knows what we're going through, you see. And He's promised never to abandon us and leave us to figure it out by ourselves. Now, a lot of people tend to forget that. But that is God's promise. And, and, and Pastor Mays talked about the promises of God this morning. We talked about the promises of God in Sunday school. You see, these are promises of God. We today must have the mind of Christ in times that we do not understand and in times that are hard to figure out. You see, we're living in a day when you have no idea what the next announcement's going to be. Amen? You have no idea what they're going to be saying tomorrow. You know, we start a new week tomorrow. Everybody goes back to work and you all get to thinking. And here we go again. What's it going to be? You know, what are we going to decide? Thanksgiving's coming Thursday. But we've got to do something about that. Let me tell you what. What do we do in those kind of times? Well, we just get the mind of Christ. Amen. Let's find out what God wants us to do. And let's be faithful in what God wants us to do. And remember, God is still God. And God is still in control. So let's look at this scripture tonight. Beginning in verse 1 and 2, the Bible says... In verse 1, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, 
If any bows and mercies, look what he says, fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. So what is he saying here? You need to understand some of the wording that's taking place here. In verse number one, the word consolation simply means encouragement. It's telling us that if you're going to be, if there is going to be any encouragement, if you're going to be encouraged in any way, it must be in Christ. Amen. You see, you're not going to get encouragement from this world. You're not going to be encouraged by the events and the circumstances of your life. But bless God, you can get encouragement in Christ. If there's going to be any of it, it's going to have to start with Christ, you see. And so we need encouragement. And if we're going to have, and he goes on to list some other words. He says, if we're going to have any encouragement, if we're going to have any comfort, if we're going to have any fellowship, and then there's only one way we can have it, and that is in Christ, you see. We can't find it no other way. And so Paul begins as he dumps into verse uh, 2. And he begins to say this. Uh, he says, uh, fulfill ye my joy. How do you do that? Well, what I would ask you to do is be like-minded. You know, there is some things tonight that you and I must be like-minded on. Amen. We must be unlike-minded who Christ is. We must be like-minded that Christ paid our sin debt and there's only one way tonight to salvation and that's through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no medium. There is no giving up ground. It is one way and one way only and we need to be like-minded in those things. There is some things that we need to stick to our guns and say that's the way it is. That's like-minded, you see. And he says be like-minded, having the same love, love one another, being of one accord, and of one mind. Paul would say in Romans chapter 12 and verse uh, number um, 16, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. You see, we don't need to be a conceited person. We don't need to be a prideful person. We just need to be a follower of Christ. And if we follow Christ, it will humble us. It will bring us to a place uh, where we are like-minded. You know, we back, back to what I said before. Be careful that you think too much of yourself because then you're headed for a fall, you see. We've got to realize who we are and what Christ has done for us. And that's what Paul's driving home. And that's the very thing, really, that these uh, Philippians were doing. You know, they were the giving church. They were, they were the church that had, had a heart for other people. And you see, and, and Paul is telling us, telling, you know, just, just remain like-minded. Fulfill my joy and be Christ-like and, 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 and be, be, but just stay where you are. Do as you can do. You see, I think that's, that's what we do here as a church uh, when we pitch in and we help some of these mission work that's fallen behind and, and some of them that needs a little bit of help. We're being like-minded. You know, God has been good to us. And we ought to be good to others. Amen. And uh, not be conceited and hoarded up and stuff like that. Verse number three, as we continue on in this chapter, he says, let nothing, now notice this, let nothing be done through what? Strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Don't be caught up in selfish pride. Don't, turn, don't give in to strife or wrong to bring glory to yourself, it will only end in disaster, you see. He's telling us, let Christ be your example. Don't let the people of this world be your example. Don't pick a hero that's of this world. Uh, you know, a lot of our young people has got worldly heroes. Got to be careful with that. Because most of them, and I don't guess all of them, but most of them don't represent much good. You see, and they become heroes. What we need is heroes that are standing for Christ. What we need to teach our, our young people, let the Apostle Paul be your hero. Amen. Yeah, uh, the man who stood for Christ. And let these great preachers of old be your heroes that gave the gospel. And priests, and many of them died because they preached, gave their lives because they preached and, and that needs to be our heroes today you see but all oh, we get hung up in the people of the world 
We are instructed here in this chapter to deal in humility. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 26, Paul wrote this, Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Vainglory and strife and all those things, that's what it leads to. It leads to us causing harm to each other. It leads us causing to have hard feelings one toward another. You see, there's never any good comes out of strife. There's never any good comes out of vainglory. We don't deserve any type of glory. If you want glory, give it to God. Amen. And let God be honored and let God be praised. And hey, and every man a liar. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Be faithful and to trust God and to love God. And let's be like minded in this thing. If ever there's a time, church, that we got to remain in, in one accord and like minded is the very day we're living in. When, when they're trying to stop and ridicule and change a lot of the things that we want to do and we want to preach and we want to say and by the way if they have their way they're going to attack these pulpits amen they're going to attack these pulpits they don't want preachers preaching uh hellfire and brimstone no they want us to pat us on the back and you know pet us and say oh you know you're just pretty and doing good uh and, and by the way some of these are pretty and doing good but uh but it's not all of us amen uh, some of us need some, some help I need some help. Mm-hmm. Amen. Help me, Joe. Amen. Amen. Verse number four. Here's what the Bible says. Verse number four. Look not every man on his own things, but what? What does it say? But every man also on the things of others. Can I tell you tonight, that's a difficult verse. For instructed here, in other words, he's saying, let us be last, God first, and others next. You see, God ought to be number one in our lives. Others ought to come in second, and then ourselves ought to be on the bottom of the list. But I'm afraid in our society, we've got it backwards. Oh, me, 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 me lives on the top, and God dwells somewhere, maybe in the middle, and maybe at the bottom. But I'm at the top. It's all about me. What you gonna do for me? Preacher, what's in it for me? I would help you, but what am I gonna get out of it? You see, Paul says, that's not it. That's the wrong attitude. You're gonna miss the joy of God. You see, for he said in verse 4, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And that's not popular today. Uh, for like I said, we live all, we live in a society that's all about me. You ever seen to be? Me, me. You know, we, uh, I sung a song one time. Me, 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 me. That's what it's about. Everybody wants me. It's all about me. Give to me. I don't care what you've got. I don't care if it's yours. If I want it, you better get it. That's not the way it works. And at least that didn't work for me and I grew up. Did it work for you? I could go tell my mom and dad, this is what I want and you better get it. That was not a good idea. Amen. It was not. And that just wasn't a good plan. We tried it a few times. And we figured out, me and my brothers figured out, this ain't working. We're coming out on the wrong end of the stick on this thing. Amen. So we calmed down. That's the problem with Christians today. That's the problem with much of our society today. Amen. And that's the problem with our government. Won't hand everybody everything. Come on. You see, it does them no good. I better get off this subject. Uh, verse number five. Let's move on. Let this mind, this is where we're going to start preaching tonight. I'm just getting started. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, here's what Paul is telling them. He's instructing them. I tell you what you do. You have the mind of Christ. Develop the mind of Christ. Think like Christ would have thought. I'm going to give you three things from the rest of this text tonight that I think we see in the mind of Christ. Three things, and I'm going to give them to you, and then we're going to go back and talk about them. Number one, we see the mind of servanthood. You know, Christ became a servant. Number two, we see the mind of sacrifice. And then thirdly, we see the mind of expectation. 
So number one, let's deal with servanthood in verse 6 and 7. The Bible says this, uh, Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Number one, the mind of Christ had everything to do with servanthood. He became a servant. He left the throne room of glory. He left the royalty of heaven to become a servant on this earth uh, to serve God and to serve mankind. It is because of what Christ did that you and I are saved today because he came in be, to be a servant to man and, and, and he served mankind when he died on that old rugged cross. Uh, it affected generations to come and many more generations he became a servant. God himself came down as a servant to man. So he had servanthood. Servanthood was on his mind. We clearly see in verse 6, you clearly see that Jesus was God. You see, for it says, go back and look, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus was God. Jesus would say, in John chapter 10, and verse 30, a simple statement. He would say, I and my Father are one. You see, they couldn't comprehend that. and They couldn't understand that. But his statement was very clear. I am God. Amen. In John chapter 1, the gospel of John chapter 1, first three verses, you probably know this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The Word here in this chapter has to do with Jesus Christ, and He was in the beginning, and the Word was God, and the Word w was with God, but then the Word was made flesh and verse I'm going to read verse 14 that same chapter and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth it was this very word that was uh, to, hey by the way he had a hand in creation he was one of those uh, uh, that spoke into existence all the things that you and I see today and he left the throne room of heaven and came down to earth and became flesh to suffer and to hurt and to ridicule be ridiculed so you and I can sit here tonight knowing we're saved by grace through faith knowing we're on our way to heaven knowing all is well you see there was a price paid he had to become a servant and so he became just that verse 7 the Bible says he made himself of no reputation which simply means what does that mean? it means he emptied himself of his divine privileges he emptied himself of his heavenly status and he entered the Virgin Mary for the purpose, one purpose only, mankind. For he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He left all of heaven. What we have here is the incarnation of Christ. He took on the body of flesh and blood. The creator came down to be a servant, to minister, to benefit others. And along the way, Jesus would raise the dead and he'd heal the sick and he'd give sight to the blind. And uh, all those things were great things that he'd done for people. Now, that's not why he came. Just say, those miracles he'd done was just proof that he was God. Just say. But the greatest miracle that, that he came to do, he's still doing today. And that's saving lost sinners, you see. Many times we miss that and we get caught up in the great things that Christ done. And they were great and wonderful things. You see, he didn't have to do any of those things. But he did them. He did them to the glory of God. But his purpose was me. And his purpose was you, you see, that we might be saved. How many times, how many times in our life have, have, have we, has our heavy burden been lessened because someone cared enough for us? Can I ask this? How many times have we lessened somebody's burden on this life? You know, Christ cared enough for us to leave the 
throne room of heaven and come and die on this earth so we could be saved. Well, what are we supposed to do? I tell you what, what we're supposed to do. We should lighten somebody else's load. Amen. Let them know you think about them. Let them know you're praying for them. You see, we're all burdened down with heavy loads. Some more so than others. And some we don't understand and we don't know why. But oh, God has given us the ability to be able to lessen somebody's load. To be a servant of God's. Uh, Mark 10, 45, the Bible says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many an attitude of a servant will lessen someone's load thus lessening the stress of this life we're all under a lot of stress these days amen but oh it's so good to have that stress lifted so number one he had the mind of a servant number two he had the mind of sacrifice look at verse number eight and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now here we have sacrifice. Jesus, like we've already said, was willing to give up all of heaven to redeem fallen man, to glorify the Father. And John 17 and verse 5, he said this, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, uh, uh, with thine own self, with the glory which I have with thee before the world was. You see. He wanted God to be pleased. It was the purpose of Jesus through his sacrifice to bring glory to his Father. And so he was willing to sacrifice. He was willing to give his life a ransom for many. He was willing to come and die on that old rugged cross. Can I tell you, nobody made him go. They did not drag him to Calvary. You go read the story. Nobody drug him and got him by the arms and drug him to Calvary. The Bible says he went as a sheep, as a lamb to the slaughter. Amen. He just kept on going, carrying that heavy load of the world of sin on his back. And then they laid the old rugged cross on his back. Never once uh, did he cry, uh, come and take me out of here. We find in the garden that he asked for the cup to pass from him. But what did he say? But Father, if it be thy will, uh, you know, let this cup pass from me. But if not, Father, thy will be done. You see what it was? It was a willing sacrifice to die for the sins of mankind. What we need today is willing sacrifices. Willing sacrifices in the field of God. You see, I'm so glad that there are some things in this life I don't have to worry about. Amen. Now, a lot of people spend a lot of time worrying about them. And a lot of people spend a lot of time wondering about them. But I'm going to tell you, there's one thing that you shouldn't have to wonder and worry about, and that's whether you're saved or not. Amen. Amen. If you're stressed out on whether you're saved or not, you're probably not. Amen. I don't have to stress and worry if, I, if I'm going to heaven. Why? Because that was settled. That was settled at Calvary. Christ settled it on the old rugged cross. Uh, hey, he's not going to ask me, are you worthy? Mm -mm. He already knows the answer to that. Amen. You know what he's going to be looking for? The blood. He's going to be looking for the blood of Christ. And when he sees the blood, he's going to say he's worthy. Amen. Not because of what I've done, but because of what Christ did when he sacrificed himself and gave himself on the old rugged cross. You see, he had sacrifice on his mind. Can you imagine can you, can you imagine, just, just, just for a moment, now we don't have the mind of Christ and, and we can never be Christ and we can never really think like Christ, but can you imagine having the mind of Christ and living upon this earth, knowing what your destiny was, knowing why you came to this earth, knowing that you was headed to the old rugged cross? Can you imagine that? Knowing, he knew these things, you see. But yet he was willing to go and be sacrificed for you. Now, he had the mind of sacrifice. You see, our text is, tonight says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
He knew where he was going. He knew what he was, what was coming his way. And what does he ask of us today? I believe he asked us to sacrifice some things. To sacrifice on behalf of him, you see. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know what that means? That means he wants us to come willingly uh, to him. Once he saves us and, and we become a child of his, uh, he wants us faithful on the field. He wants us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, something he can use, something that he can use for his glory, something he can use uh, to bring glory to his name. You know, hey, we all have got something that God will give us to do and we ought to do it to the glory of God. Amen. You see, Christ came as a sacrifice for us. It requires sacrifice sometimes. It requires giving up some things sometimes. It requires sometimes, and I'm afraid many times, things that people just don't want to do. And we see more and more of that in our world today. Finally tonight, he had the mind of expectation. Look at my verse 9 through 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. Can I tell you, God was pleased with it, wasn't he? God was pleased with what took place. And he given him a name that is above every name. And what does that mean? Well, here's the expectation. That though we live in a world today that says, I'll never bow the knee. I'll never give praise unto a God. I'll, you'll never find me kneeling. Well, I got, I got some news for you. There's coming a day when that's exactly what you'll do. Amen. That's, that's, there's coming a day that that's exactly what's going to happen. Because here's the expectation. Because of Christ and because of his willingness uh, to die on the old, old rugged cross and because he has provided salvation for every single soul that lives upon this earth. Listen, don't believe that man that tells you that God's done pre-picked everybody and, uh, and, and you're not one that he's picked. I'm telling you, he wants everybody to be saved. Amen. And every soul has the opportunity to be saved. That's, that's the grace of of God. Here's the expectation now in verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Which, how many? Every knee shall bow. Uh, that's from the top to the bottom. Uh, that's from the, the best to the worst. Amen. The Bible says every knee shall bow. It goes even a little bit further to say uh, of things that are in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And by the way, the angels now, the angels have no problem today giving glory to God, do they? The angels have no problem, even though they do not know salvation, even they do not, not know what it means to be redeemed. They cannot sing the song of the redeemed, but yet they have no problem praising God and by the way you and I have been pulled out of the pit of hell you and I have been saved uh, and, and, and been released from bondage we ought to have no problem praising God but the Bible says every knee shall bow the things in heaven the things on earth and the things under the earth well I'm going to tell you old Satan you know what he's going to do one of these days he's going to bow the knee amen you see every knee shall bow. And it goes on even beyond that. Verse 11, and every tongue shall confess. Confess what? That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know what I've decided a long time ago? I think I'll just do my praising right now. Amen. I think I'll just uh, praise God and sing and bow and and, and have a good time. So when it comes time for this day, I'll be practiced up. Amen. You see, I remember a guy, a good guy. Well, he was a good guy. And, uh, and me and him got along well, but he had a problem. He just had a problem with church, and he had a problem with the Bible. And, and uh, he, just, he just couldn't comprehend, you know, this thing of... Uh, of a, of, a, of, a, of a man coming and 
dying for everybody. He couldn't, he couldn't understand that. He said, I just can't understand why, 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 why would he even do that? And why does he even care? And, and you know, and I kept saying, well, that's, that's the way, as he does. That's why he came. He came to die for your sin. And he said, well, that's a good, and that's a good man. He would say stuff like this. Well, that's a good man. And, 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 you know, and that's good for people that believe all that stuff. And, and, uh, but he said, I'm not into that. And he said, I'm not going to give him that. I said, oh, but you will one of these days. I said, the problem is, uh, it's going to be too late for your soul to be saved. Because you, you will bow the knee and you will confess Christ. It's not me. He said, I'm telling you right now, I won't do it. I said, well, I'm telling you, you will. Because that's what the Bible says. And uh, I don't know what ever happened to him. I don't, and I hope he got things right with God. But he's still going to bow the knee one of these days. And he's still going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Expectation. You see... Christ knew there'd come a day when he would rule and reign. But he also knew the suffering he had to go through. But he also knew what the Father was going to do for him. Amen. Can I say you and I have the same knowledge today. We may have to suffer in this life and there may be things that we go through we don't understand. But the Bible has told us as Christians that we will come out of this thing victorious. Amen. We'll come out a winner. A winner. That's what we are in Christ. We are a winner. So let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let's have the mind. Let's have a servant's mind. Let's have a sacrificial mind. What are we going to do for God? What are we going to give up? What, what, what are we going to sacrifice? There are some things we could do without. Because a lot of the things we have is getting in the way of Christ. And then what is our expectation? Are we expecting God to do things? Do you expect God to do things in 2020 and soon 2021? Well, he's still on the throne, isn't he? You see, so God will do mighty things. So let's have the mind of Christ. Now let's look around and see what, what Christ would have us to do. That's what Christ did when he was upon the earth. He was interested in what the Father wanted. He was interested in doing the will of God. He didn't listen to the multitudes. Even he had them. They were following him around everywhere, hooping and hollering at him and trying to cast stones at him. And, and even the devil, you know, tempted him to try to get him to fall. But he never did because his focus was on God. And we got the same ability today. If we'll keep our focus on God, he'll, he'll never let us go. Amen. And we can trust him. Amen. Gary, won't you come up here and sing that last song again you just sung for us tonight? Uh, gear up Gary's last song he sung. I don't know how he's going to make it, but I know he will. And that's a good song because you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know God's got something going on. Amen. And I don't know how we're going to come through this thing, but I know we will. Amen. So tonight, as Gary sings this song, if you've if you got something you want to pray about at the altar, you come. If you want to whisper a prayer there in your seat uh, for somebody or for yourself, or you just want to thank God. It's Thanksgiving week. We're to thank God for salvation. We're to thank God that we're sitting here tonight saved by the blood of the crucified one. On the way to heaven. Amen. If the world would end tomorrow, we'd go to heaven. Is everybody going to heaven? Everybody know you're going to heaven tonight? Do you know that? Do you know that for sure? Uh, because, you know, it's a no-so thing. You don't have to wonder. You can know for sure. Amen. Gary, come and sing again. gonna make this trial a blessing how he can turn his Christ's sorrow into praise and I don't see how he can turn these nights
That's a truth we need to hold on to. I know he will. Amen. And God is, I mean, this is God, and he's faithful in all that we do. Amen. Well, thank you for being here tonight and uh, coming out. It gets dark early now, and, uh, and uh, that don't start climbing back the other way until after December. So it just gets darker a little bit earlier every day. So uh, that's all right. Uh, It'll be springtime soon, amen? And so thank you much for coming. Let me share with you. Let's see, this week, uh, Bible study is Wednesday. We're only one, only one Bible study. That's Wednesday morning at 11, and that will be live streamed. You can go back and watch it. If you can't get here Wednesday morning, you can watch it on, on the um, Facebook page, uh, YouTube, or, and, uh, and the uh, website. So I'd encourage you to keep up with the Bible study through the book of Jeremiah. And uh, study with us in that great book of the Bible. Of course, no uh, School of the Bible this week. No Master Clubs on Wednesday. It's Thanksgiving week. And so uh, pray for a lot of folks. There's going to be a lot of folks sitting out in daylight in the morning freezing, uh, trying to kill them a deer. And uh, I used to be one of them, but I ain't anymore. Uh, but, uh, it ain't for me. But anyway... I guess I could sit in my back porch if I wanted to. And ain't that right? Amen. Let's see. Uh, next Monday, we are having uh, what we call Hanging of the Greens. We'll gather here about 5 o'clock. On, that's the 30th. And then we'll all pitch in who shows up. And we're going we're gonna to just decorate the sanctuary with Christmas. We'll put the tree up. We'll put the decorations up. And all those things on that evening. So if you can come and help us, we'd sure love to have you come and help us. More hands makes light work, and we get her done fast. And so we'll be decorating for Christmas next Monday. Here, if you want to, if you want to have a point set, I put in here, in honor or in memory of somebody, then you can start bringing them uh, next week, and uh, we'll we'll just line the front of this auditorium up with those poinsettias that you bring, and uh, they always beautify the place. Wonderfully. And so, I hope you have a good Thanksgiving week. Amen. And turkey. Eat all kind of turkey. I've already had all kind of turkey. And uh, now I'm a turkey connoisseur. I love turkey. And uh, I could eat it all the time. That's one of my favorites. It's turkey. You know. But uh, anyway, I'll have some when I go home. Uh, it's turkey. Amen. Anything else I'm missing? Way announcements? Anybody know anything I don't know? What do you think, Joseph? Huh? What do you want to do? Hey, let's... I, I tell you what let's do, Joseph. Let's sing a song. You want to? Well, let's sing I'll Fly Away. You know that one? Yeah, you know that one? 
Yeah, Alice, me and Joe just want to sing a song. Y'all sing with us? Yeah, you ready? Ready? Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll sing. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Amen. Boy, I wish everybody would get that excited about singing. Amen. Yeah, well, that's the way we ought to be. My goodness. Hey, we ought to be excited. To you know one of these days, we're going to fly away. Let's stand to be dismissed tonight. Thank you for coming. Amen, brother. Praise the Lord. Keep singing, brother. Amen. Our Father, thank you, God, for giving us time in the house of God tonight. Lord, for the word of God and for the music and for just being able, Father, to come together, sing, and to praise your holy name. Thank you for these that are here tonight. Lord, I pray you'll give them safety as they go home. Those that's listening by the way of live stream, bless their home tonight. Lord, thank you for this Thanksgiving week. Keep us safe, Lord, and bring us back for the next point of time. In Christ's name we ask and pray. Amen. This wondrous revelation 